Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The gospel lesson for this morning has provided me with some insights that I had never really thought of before. The setting here is basically that Jesus Christ comes into Cana. He comes to be the guest at a wedding. But in all probability, it was probably friends of Mary or somehow, or acquaintances with Mary, that is invited to the wedding, and they also then invite Jesus Christ and his disciples. Because it would seem that Mary knew what was going on, and Mary knew the people, and Mary would know a little bit about the circumstances, and also the importance of having a good reception. Because it was important at this time, probably more important than what we can even understand. You know, to run out of wine or to run out of basic supplies at a reception or at a party, even though it lasted maybe a week, would be seen as something really unacceptable. And it would be seen as something that, you know, you carry for the rest of your life. And people would always be whispering, they ran out of wine. And it's that something forgivable. But something else unique un happens here. They run out of wine, and what happens? Mary comes to Jesus Christ and says, they run out of wine. Listen to it. Jesus' mother was there, and, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. When the wine had gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no wine. And then this response from Jesus. Dear woman, why do you, not in, why do you involve me? And Jesus replied, my time has yet not come. Have you heard a little bit about what it means to draw the line? In relationships, it's sometimes important for us to draw a line. In other words, if someone is taking advantage of us, we draw a line and we say, no more. Unfortunately, many times in our life, this drawing the line has to be done with family members or with friends. People who are inconsiderate, people who are demanding, people who want to know everything in our lives, people who want to borrow money, people who want you to co-sign on loans. And it becomes important sometimes, even particularly if it is family members, to remember that it is important that we draw the line and say, no, I cannot do this. Now, am I mistaken, or did Jesus Christ here draw the line on his mother? Courageous man. Have you ever thought about that? But Mary comes up to Jesus and says to him, you know, they're out of wine. And Christ says, well, woman, what is it to me? And I don't know exactly how to explain that remark, except for Jesus Christ saying, my time has not yet come. In other words, Mary, there is something else going on here, and you need to understand it. Now remember, she has been his mother now for about 30 years. She knows something about Christ. It says this is his first miracle or his first sign. But parents always know something about their children as they are growing up, how they behave, how they react, the things that they are doing, the things that they are interested in. And Jesus Christ is now reminding her, probably very gently, that at this point now in his life, the relationship is changing. It had been mother and son for up to 30 years. Now the relationship is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be master and disciple, even with his mom. And it's important then, even for Mary, to understand who and what Jesus Christ is and what he is about to do. 
Now, I wish I could stand up here and tell you that Jesus Christ only had to draw the line with his mother. But it isn't true. There's other examples in the scriptures that he had to confront other people. He had to tell Satan, no, this far and no further. He had to tell his disciples and remind them constantly of who he was and that he couldn't get involved in some things that they would want to drag him into. And we all know how difficult sometimes it is to say no and to draw the line. We've had to do it ourselves. And unfortunately, we've also had it done to us. I learned in a very, very difficult lesson how difficult it can be to draw a line. I was serving a vacancy congregation up in Iowa. It was my first call. That was my first call. I was serving a congregation, and then I served this vacancy congregation. And a couple there had invited us to dinner. And we had a young son, toddler, probably just approaching two years old, and he was invited also. And you know, I'm the dad. My kid is going to eat vegetables. So they were there, and our hostess had cooked carrots. And my wife wisely said, well, don't make a big deal of it. I said, he's going to eat his carrots. So here we were at this dinner. I, the good dad, insisting that my son eat his carrots. I drew the line. You eat your carrots. He did. Guess where they ended up? He threw them up on his dinner plate. Now that's not really a life-changing type of situation, but for me it had a tremendous impact because it made me stop and think about what do you do and how do you draw a line? When is it necessary and when is it not necessary? And you have to stop and think about that in your own life. And I know that every one of you has had the opportunity or maybe even the chance today to draw the line. And it is hard, it is difficult, and it is challenging. And sometimes it doesn't always work out the way that you want. I don't know how many times I've been involved with weddings where lines are drawn quickly. And it gets to be very, very difficult and very challenging. And feelings can very easily be hurt. But drawing the line is absolutely necessary at times between parents, between children, sometimes between friends in the church. Draw the line. I've had people draw the line by saying, no, I am not going to sing that hymn. I don't like it. And if we sing it again, I'm not coming to church anymore. Well, that was somebody else's favorite hymn, you know. So it gets to be very, very difficult and challenging. But get back to this story here a minute for about, about Mary. Jesus Christ said this to her, and what was Mary's response? She very quickly turned to the servants and said, do what he tells you to do. Doesn't that seem to be a strange response? It might. It might seem to be a strange response, but Mary here probably also, or did know something that the other people didn't. And what is so amazing here is that Jesus Christ drew this line and said, it's not my time, but Mary knew something else about Jesus Christ. She knew that he was a caring, loving person. You can tell that about your children, can't you? Can't you tell your child, child, and which one is really loving and caring, and can't you tell the one who is just so bitter or angry? 
You know what your children are capable of and what they can do and can't do? I don't know if Mary knew all that about Jesus Christ, but she knew him and she knew who he was. And how did Jesus Christ respond? He turned the water into wine. He cared that much. And he loved that much. And Mary could know that. And felt confident about it. There was nothing she could do about that situation. But she knew someone who could. And so she entrusted and turned the whole thing over to him. And he took care of it. He took care not just of the situation, he also took care of Mary. Now there is an important lesson for each and every one of us. You know, I find it difficult sometimes in this world to, you know, particularly keep my mouth shut, which I'm reminded so very often that I need to do. But things are going on, and sometimes your kids make decisions that they just absolutely should not be making. And sometimes people live a lifestyle that they absolutely should not be making. And I can come in real quickly and draw this line and draw that line and draw that line. And really what I'm trying to do basically is protect myself. But here we're reminded that, you know, what Mary did is she found a very difficult situation. A situation she couldn't control. So a situation which we, she turned over to Jesus Christ. And in this respect, Jesus Christ handled it and made it better. But sometimes Jesus Christ handles it differently than what, what we might expect. then it's important that you and I sit down and take a look at where we draw the line and what's our motives for drawing the line. I don't like sometimes what I see in this world. You know, I'm really at the point sometimes where I just want to shut the news off. But what can I do about it? Well, there are things that each and every one of us can do, and I'm not going to make that list for you. But we cannot be discouraged. And we can also understand that we have going for us the same thing that Mary did. Mary had a Savior and a Lord who loved her, who cared for her, who provided for her. And she turned the situation over to him. Sometimes we have things which are absolutely impossible for us to handle. We may have a child or a family that has disappointed us. We may find things going on in the church that we don't really like. But it's important at that time in our life that we turn this over to Jesus Christ and let him do his work. This is the promise he has made to us. I don't know where some of us get this martyr type of complex where we think that everything in the world has got to be fixed by me. God is still in charge and he has given to us a loving Savior. A loving Savior who, who dies for us. And we surely never deserve that. Or earned that. But this loving God comes into our world and says, put your burdens on me and I will help. I will take care. That doesn't excuse you from making an effort. Don't use God as your sort of daily servant who just comes in and takes care of all your problems. Because he's also given to you a lot of resources to use. 
And you're going to come forward today and you're going to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And that is a resource. A source of strength, a source of restoration. And it reminds us again and again and again that we have a God who cares. Who cares enough to give, send us his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. A God who doesn't sit and count the sacrifice that he makes by giving up his own son. But he knows that we are helpless and he knows that we are hopeless. And that on these things we, can, we can't do it alone. So he gives us his Savior. He gives us his Son. And he extends his hand to us. He gives us a fellowship of believers. Some who may disagree with us. But at the same time, when we're down and when we're out, they're there as a body of support, provided again by a loving God who carry out, who, who Jesus Christ carries out God's command and fulfills the promises and fill, makes, gives these promises and this hope to us. Now, when you go home this morning, you're going to go home and you can probably say, well, I didn't hear anything about changing the water into wine, and that's okay. But I, when I started the sermon, you have to forgive me for a minute. Somebody out there is probably praying, Pastor, I hope you get to shut up pretty soon. <laughs> But God reminds us in every human way possible what he has given and what he has done for us. He's not forgotten. He's not removed himself. But he is here in our lives in word and in deed. And now today he asks that we also remember what he has done as given and we go out and depend upon him in our lives because people we have the same Savior and the same God that Mary did and the things that he revealed and gave to Mary the confidence he gave to Mary to know that she could say to Jesus Christ or to the servants listen to him that same gift is given to us the same identity so with God's blessings, you know, sometimes we're forced to draw a line. But pray about it. Think about it. Use your good old common sense and be guided and directed by Jesus Christ. And turn it over to him. And he'll handle it for you. In Christ's name, amen.